So welcome back to another episode and this is an episode I've wanted to do for around eight years and I finally went into the other room, I cleared the bookshelves off, I brought all my anime art books in here and I can finally do an episode on these and I gotta say most of these are older style anime uh, films and TV series. Uh, I've been collecting these books since 1985. I'm gonna go through them all, not in any particular order. But it's kind of funny that this one is uh, on the top here. And uh, this, wow, here we go. Robotech Art One. This is really the first English, uh, you know, book on Japanese animated, uh, you know, on Japanese animated shows, which was Robotech, They're taking three shows and making them into one over here. But it was so amazing for me to, you know, pick this up when I was a kid in 1985, I, I went to a comic book store and I ordered it and I think it took three months to come in. That's like, things were really shitty back then. It was really crappy. And I kept going to this comic book store and saying, is it in yet, is it in? And he's like, no, it's not in yet. He was an asshole of a guy too, who ran it. Even though you're giving him business, he was an asshole about it. Finally, it showed up and it was like, I don't sound like all hokey, but it was a dream come true for me as a kid. I was like, Wow, I have the official art book to Robotech. And Robotech was my favorite show as a child and I still appreciate it to this day for its place in history. It was it introduced me to Macross in this regard. I I kind of known about Macross through model kits, but it, you know, when the show came out, I was able to finally take it all in and I was like, wow. And uh, I got to thank Robotech for doing that and I picked up a few Robotech art books back in the day. Here's another one. I won't open this one up. This is for Robotech Art 2. And this was a lot of fan drawings, which wasn't bad, but... Oh, and here we go. Robotech Art 3 The Sentinels. This was the sequel. This was the sequel that Harmony Gold had written and uh, that we were going to get. And it was showing all the episodes and all the things that were going to happen, all the new characters. And uh, at the time, I was really excited about that. Let's just bring that over here. Now, I've never had a chance to talk about this anime in the show's history, and it's a crying fucking shame because I love this anime. It is called Ixer One, and I can't go into the explanation of all these animes, that would be impossible, but it's a. Uh, it really is a. It's a kind of a sci fi hentai esque, I, I don't even like to say that, mecha horror. Uh, kind of anime and it's really intense. There's a lot of blood and guts in this and really intense scenes and as a young boy in 1986-87 when I got this, oh I was absolutely in love. Windaria the Fabulous Battle. This was a, an anime, I believe it was a film. I don't think it went directly to video. I don't know if it's an OVA. I've never seen the film. I think I saw a part of it at uh, an anime convention at one time, but I always loved the art for Windaria and I had to pick it up. I, I was a very, for me growing up, it was very unusual for like, a Westerner, a uh, Caucasian guy to be buying Japanese books. I mean, everybody, th my own friends thought I was fucking crazy. Like, what are you doing buying Japanese books? Can you read that? That was the number one thing I'd always get. Can you read that? It's like, no, I just like looking at the pretty pictures. And to be honest with you, what I could do with a lot of these anime art books, and this is Zeno or Zeno Rhymer, is I could go through all the, 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 the shots and I could piece together what was going on, especially if it was really sequential cell art. I could tell you what was going on and I understand all of this stuff. So, Zeno Rhymer here. Zeta Gundam. Oh my God, is that ever a classic? And this is a very old school book and I'm a very old school guy, so I have it. Uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion, one of the biggest animes in the 90s. It was just one of the biggest. I, I've never seen anything like that uh, for an anime before. Uh, Attack on Titan has got the same kind of clout going on, but had to get the art book and oh, stupendous, uh, really stupendous. I, I love collecting art books because I was an artist and I was doing the anime style. I was drawing comic books and uh, it was wonderful to be able to have some of these books. Oh, here's a goodie. Cowboy Bebop. How could you not get an, an art book in Cowboy Bebop? I saw this, I'm like, I had to have it. And I tell you, 
like some of these are old school, some of them are more newer school. Um, but let me tell you, some of the prices on these anime art books in the 80s, 90s, holy shit, it was insane. Oh, this is not an anime art book. I don't know how this got in here. Uh, my five star stories, uh, like all the models and and all the, oh, I, I uh, huge explanations. The five star stories was another manga I really loved, and the design aspects and the mecha designs, the Knight of Gold, the Mirage Knights. Too fantastic to talk about. One of my favorite pictures, right there. This is uh, one of the guides, I believe. Uh, if this is for the movie. And I think I heard this was a movie program or something. I'm not sure if that's the case, but I've had this for years since I was younger. And I, I, I don't know how much I paid for it, but that to me, that's just... Doesn't get any more macros than that. Big fan of macros. Oh, here's something interesting. This is... Gray illustrations on the manga Gray. Don't know if any of you guys remember that. I think it was brought out by Viz back in the day. I, I loved reading that. And the character designer of uh, um, of Dan Gaio and Ixter One, right here, had to have his collected works. And oh, I, I love his Ixter One stuff. It's just the best. Oh, here's a really old art book. Be Forever Yamato. It was over here at Star Blazers, and this was a feature film. And I remember I was in a comic book store and I was looking at this and I love Star Blazers. And you look at the animation, I was like, I, we never got this. This is like a feature film. And I was so jealous in the 80s, uh, especially in the, the later 80s, looking at some of this stuff going, we don't have any of this. And this is before anime was in this country. You had to say this is before anime was in this country. So I was jealous. I was jealous and there's nowhere to buy it. You can download it, you can do anything like that. So what you would do back then, if you were interested in this, you'd buy the book and, and you'd read through it and look through all the pictures and try to piece it together. Because who knows if you were going to be able to see it back then. Shoji Karamari's Macross uh, design works. This is all his uh, oh, design work for the Valkyrie fighters over the years. And uh, Jesus, this, this guy, he's a director of Macross, the mechanical designer. He is a god. He is, I mean, I've said this before. I swear to God, he was born to draw transforming robots. That was his destiny. Uh, Studio Ghibli art book. Oh, here is a great, great classic. I got this, I think, in 1987 for Christmas. Uh, the Art of Laputa. Wow. Just unbelievable. Ha! Ah, and you guys will laugh at this. It's like, oh my God, Johnny's collecting hentai. Well, I got it. I got his artwork all over the, over here. This is the I can't. Uh, I'll have to. I'll have to bleep some of that out. But this is the character designer on the Langrisser series. Uh, does anybody remember the Langrisser series? It's uh, a strategy game. It was over here as War Song. And trust me, I'm not kidding. I really I love his coloring. You can look at all the the hentai esque stuff going on here, but look at the coloring and the drawings are. Really something else. I, I appreciated him as an artist. I really, really did. Bubblegum Crisis. An art book on Bubblegum Crisis. I, uh, this really changed my life when I saw Bubblegum Crisis in 1988. And I still have the art book and I love it. I got the DVDs. Sorry, the Blu-rays. About six, seven months ago. Now, um, here's some of the newer Macross. Macross Frontier. We got Macross Delta out now. But yeah, here we go. Nadia, I believe this is the Nadia movie. Picked that up a long time ago. Mickey Moto illustrations. We will come back to him. We'll come back to this art book soon. Oh, here is an art book. I, I think I got this in 1987. Oh, it couldn't have been. It's, an, it's his illustration work from 1971 to 1989. Jeez. Oh, that's so funny. I could have sworn I got it. No, you know what? Like Akira came out in probably 1988, the colorized, colorized version by Marvel, and I—that's where I first learned about, uh, you know, Oda Otomo's artwork. It just blew my mind. And well, anyways, I had to get this book. It must have been 1989. I got it, the Kaba book. As an artist, I would look at this book, and I would silently weep, going, "This guy's artwork is—it's the stuff of legend." Uh, the artist of Akira, and. Not only is this the artist of Akira, his illustration work in general is 
It's beyond, man. It's not just like a guy who can kind of draw anime characters. He can draw anything, and I could I could just spend a whole episode just talking about him because he's so good. Oh, here we go. Let's bring this over here. Macross Plus. Uh, I I fell in love when I was 21 years old and I came back from England and I discovered Macross Plus. And uh, I found this art book in a comic book store, and uh, I got it for a reasonable price. It wasn't as high as usual, you know, anime art books go, and I, I got this. I was like, fuck yes. I was very happy to get Macros Plus. Another anime that nobody really talks about. Letter the Fantastic Adventures of Yoko. This is a art book from my youth, and I got, I, I finally got to see the movie years later, but I, when I got the art book, I, could you imagine I walked into comic book stores and I just, I would flip through this and go, what is this movie? What is this? What is Yoko? What is this? And I didn't know, but I was so fascinated and I, I bought it from an artistic point of view. Because as I say, that's what you did. That's just what you did. Oh, here's my Mikimoto illustrations. Why I want to show you this one. This means something. It's signed. Uh, uh, one, uh, you know, mine is 1,491 out of 1,500 here. And I, I am a huge fan. This is the artist on Macross and Orgus and uh, many other things. Uh, Megazone, uh, huge fan, huge fan. So very happy to have that. I know forgotten anime that I love dearly, and that is Gal Force. I used to, in 1987, I used to have a, a Gal Force poster. Uh, it was actually 88 I had that poster and uh, had it up in my room and I, I don't know, I felt so cool. <laughs> and Gal Force was a really big, anime back in the day and this is Galforce the Earth chapter right here so anybody remember Galforce isn't it funny how Galforce is like forgotten about now and not for his old school guys oh uh, this shouldn't be here but this is Lunar this is in a video game our book kind of got involved in here uh, very nice looking stuff oh yeah here you go love it or hate it uh, I don't I don't really hate hate it but Macross 2 it was just very different and uh, it didn't capture the the flavor of the original but of course I like the character designs and the mecha designs are good too this is a great book this is a great book there used to be a really wonderful Japanese bookstore in Vancouver here called Sophia's bookstore downtown it is long gone now it used to be the place to get all things uh, you know you know anime art books now how I mean by that is I would walk in and they'd probably have about five art books that would just be on random shelves. And they were like the latest thing from Japan. And you're like, oh my god, I, I remember I saw this one. MS Team. Uh, Mobile Suit Gundam 0001-0080. And this is, this is really cool. This is like a war journal with original animated cells telling the story of, uh, you know, the, the war uh, from, you know, obviously to, to 0080. So uh, all the stuff that you like in there from 0080 is is in here and the early days of Gundam and the war and it tells it from like 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 as though it, these these events had really happened with real drawings in there and oh this is a great book if you're a Gundam fan next up is uh, the Spirited Away art book very nice Bubblegum Crash there's another one Wings of Onyamas fantastic Love Wings of Onyamas. Oh, we come across another guy, Shiro Mazamun. One of my favorite comic book guys from the 80s, 90s. He did um, Black Magic M66, Apple Seed, uh, A Ghost in the Shell, and his art books were something that you would study. They were so, like his mecha designs and fantasy artwork. Uh, wow, it's, it's, a lot of his female characters all look the same, but we didn't hold that against him because he was so damn good. Oh, Princess Mononoke, the English adaption book. Okay, Nausicaa, here we go. Gotta have Nausicaa, classic art book. This art book is awesome. It is the art book for Project Eiko, one of my favorite old school animes that I, I saw in 88 as well that made a huge impact on me. It made a huge impact on America. Antarctic Press, that comic book company back then, really got their start from Project Eiko. And the one thing that's kind of cool here, I know you can't see, but if you look at the bottom there, it's like they're little animated cells. If you flip them, they tell a story real quick. It's pretty neat. Here's more of an official art book for Wings of Bonnie Alice. 
fell in love with this movie. I, I've recommended this a lot. I, it's very dry, but it's deep. And I, I've probably seen the movie maybe about 20 to 30 times. I don't even know. It's just so good. Japanese version? Okay. Star Blazers, the English version. Yeah, they put it into like comic book form. One of my dear art books, you guys know I love. I love Macross Flashback 2012 a lot. And here's the art book. I picked that up back in like probably 1988, 89, somewhere in there. Very happy to find this. It's, it's kind of rare now. Oh, this is so funny. Do any of you guys remember the uh, the Dirty Pair? Uh, this is called uh, More Sexy 2. It's just two female uh, detectives that get into a lot of trouble in the future and all that kind of stuff. But you know the funny thing? This caused a bit of controversy in my house that I had bought this book and my sister walked in and she got mad at my parents saying, what, were you allowing him to buy books like that? What is this, The Sexy 2? Uh, the Art of the Dirty Pair? Like my sister thought it was like some porno, you know, pornography book or something, but it's, 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 well, it's not, it's gonna be one of the girls in a shower scene here, but it, it wasn't that kind of anime at all. It was a couple of shower scenes, but it was on television, okay? Television. Eve, another Evangelion art book. Another character album for Ixa One. Dragon Ball. No, I had to have a Dragon Ball book. Ho! Maspita! Maspita, this is great. I'm a huge fan of Maspita on its own, away from uh, Robotech. I, I I just love the characters, I love the world setting, I just love, look, love, love the mecha designs, that's just great. Vampire Princess Mew, or Mayu. Uh, love this, I got this back really, really early in the day. I don't even know how I got this book, I think somebody gave that to me or something back in the day. Oh, here, now we get into some older school stuff here. Dragonar, good old Dragonar, another mecha TV show from back in the early days. Arion, The Crush of Olympus. This is a wonderful book, and back in the day, I guess I spent $14 on it, which is not, that's pretty reasonable. Trigun, our book. Gotta love your Trigun. And here's the official, the big one, and I, I always wanted this. I, I got this years later, but I'd seen this when I was a younger kid, and I was like, I, I need to get Arion! You know, the, the big book, I saw this at a comic book convention, and I finally got it off eBay maybe around seven years ago or something like that, but... Yeah, I just, I just wanted to go through some of my anime art book collection, because I've been collecting these for so many years. I, I just, I started in probably 1985, really, and I, I don't collect art books too much anymore, like anime art books too much anymore. I just, I kind of, I got all the old ones that I wanted. My Macris ones are, they, I use them, I showed them in another episode and my Megazone ones are, uh, you know, they, I showed them in the Megazone episode and I have a whole bunch of smaller digest anime books as well, but I just wanted to show some of the bigger books today. So anyways, guys, until next time.